but a low. Uh, it's not that effective against infantry, I guess. And it doesn't even hit. <laughs> it's not not only slow, but only uh, also inaccurate. That's double the trouble. Oh, oh, oh this looks like a strafing bait. Indeed it does, but the American player does not have the munitions for it, so... The EP player is kind of safe against strafe, even though he does not know about it. Lots of veterans here racking up on those uh, big green squads, which is always kind of nice to see. Yeah, it's another benefit from keeping them together. They share the veteran seat. The unit uh, gains experience. The unit, the squads next to it, actually every unit next to it, gains half of that XP as well. Yeah, well, so if they get kills, <laughs> they just vet up all together. And now we saw some focus firing of the AT gun, which is kind of a sound choice by the P player. And the Hotskis <laughs> make its way there, but quickly uh, backed off, because there's another AT gun on the field, veterancy level 1 even, so that's always not good. And the Hotskis... Hotskis goes down. One kill, <laughs> and already done. But now you see the true purpose of this Hotskis, it's providing cover. I can put my PPs behind it. <laughs> so you build a hot skin <laughs> so that it dies and your pigments run behind it? <laughs> yes, because I can't build sandbags. <laughs> uh, that's an, that's not a good mission for any hot skis, I would say. <laughs> I bet I don't have any grenades as a pressing fire. Yeah, well, uh, the P have that incendiary grenade thing, right? Yeah, and it's, um, in this case it would be great, instead of just running around with the MPs. No, I have to retreat and went back to base. I, I mean, go home and tell stories from my glorious um, victories. <laughs> I always thought that the incendiary grenades were kind of a funky business to, to use because the, I think they were kind of dodgeable by the American player if he saw them coming. Yeah, but they, they explode instantly, so it's okay. You need it a little bit longer to deal the damage, but they explode on impact instead of this uh, one second timer. Right. Anyway, let's uh, recoup the last engagement. The American player actually had his, some of his AT guns decrewed, one of them, but uh, uh, there is still the guns are still on the field. His riflemen seem to be okay, although there are three on the field, having lost that previous one. Uh, and of course, he even has another mate on the field, but I'm not sure, sure how aggressive he's going to be with it, uh, given the fact that there are teller that. The possibility of Teller mines uh, being planted in the field is quite high. And we have another engagement in the middle. We have a strafing run. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, it didn't do that much of a damage though. It pinned them. I expected a little bit more. Still no zeal, I guess. But no defensive veterans. Oh, one defensive veteran seems like. Maybe your strafing run captain pilots idiots are just blind. <laughs> well, there's a lot to talk about how strafing run works. Sometimes it's even the cover that plays a role. I don't know. It's kind of random sometimes. It's kind of devastating other times. I just want to mention the veterancy choice for the uh, B grand squads. Usually you get offensive on your G43s and uh, defensive on your MP44, right? Yeah, that's usually what I do. Uh, I always offensive uh, vet for every unit that deals damage and every unit that has to cr uh, cross open cover, like VMPs, or um, tank for other units like tanks, take, uh, get defense weapons. Right. But we even see here uh, complexity. The P player even gave offensive veterans to some MP44 squads, which may result in them dying quicker, but they are going to be deadly at close range, as we saw yeah. here with the AT gun going down. I can see the Panzerschreck um, balance change, the increased accuracy. 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, you you mean about the beta, the beta patch, right? Yeah. Which I like. <laughs> <This is a laughs> I know this. <laughs> I forgot to mention it at the beginning. People may think, "What the hell? Why isn't that working? This has been changed." Oh no! This uh, this is a retail uh, replay, guys. Do not <laughs> get confused. <laughs> this is 2.601. Yeah, let's start over again. Hi, I'm Jonathan Hussey. <laughs> and I just grabbed your AT gun. That's perfect because I need AT power because I'm afraid of anything with wheels. Yeah, uh, I'm not too sure about recruiting AT guns with B uh, infantry. I mean, it's damn expensive uh, to reinforce big guns, isn't it? Yeah, but it's more exp uh, expensive to rebuild any vehicles with AT kills. I guess veterancy for both sides on uh, the infantry seems to go in favor of the American player when they are when the B player has not his uh, big wins together. But as we see here, even recruiting the AT gun did not result in much of a deal. It's con it got decreed rather quickly. Yeah. MP44 is advancing. Take this, America. Yeah, they're quite devastating at close range. I can give them that. Surprisingly enough, the third they made out by the American player has not died yet, <laughs> which is kind of a of a win in itself. Yeah, too bad the AT got the crew. Is it my impression, or yeah, has the P now. player stopped laying uh, mines? No, laying a mine right now. Okay, pure, pure mines, but I would say at the, the, the um, limit of my ammunition. Yeah, well, that's a good point. How ma how is the research situation back in the P player's base? Because over here in the American base, uh, the American player just dropped the airborne supplies, so he will have an infinite kind of uh, infinite supply of munitions and fuel. Yeah, but how? Have... Yeah, Sorry. keep going. No, no, go on, go. Uh, I don't have the convenience to drop uh, resources from the sky, uh, so I have to harvest uh, the field. And um, I'm laying um, down some mines, but most of my uh, ammunition goes into weaponry. Yeah, that's that's a good point. I guess piguins are much more effective with uh, their weapon upgrades than they are without them. Uh, however, I have noticed in these last minutes that the P player focuses more on combat rather than getting map control. I'm not sure, sure how this is going to play out in the end. And you can the one that was lost earlier was never replaced. True that. And we once again have the Rifeman Engineer Horde advancing near the center of the field. Do a P player stand any chance against such kind of army composition by an American player? You need armored cars or P4 with infantry, it's pretty tough. Yeah. By the way, the the third mate just went down to the teller mine. Guess <laughs> why? <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that I always it always intrigued me that the the infantry, although quite strong, most of the time they uh, cannot win against equal numbers of American infantry unless he has vehicle support. But we don't see that much of a vehicle support in this game. No, I think we're. Um I'm still missing the Panzer IV. It's really hurting, I just keep feeding grenadiers, ouch, grenadiers to infantry and mines and strafing runs. Yeah, that's a good point, but uh, how, how is the fuel situation there? It's enough. I could, um, uh, 140 on the bank. I could uh, build, easily build two almost three uh, hundred four. We just had the pigments, but going down on the retreat, uh, on those riflemen, uh, which is not, which is never good for a P player. So, uh, uh, you have the fuel over there. Uh, I guess you are constrained manpower wise. Yes, always at the limit. So, reinforcing, reinforcing, reinforcing. But um, I've made, I've uh, got every upgrade for the Panther battle group. 
assuming I can uh, collect thousand manpower, I can spare me with tanks. Yeah, uh, well, I have seen that before. I have seen players getting all their buildings and the upgrades for the Panther Patrol, but in this case, do you think it actually would pay off? I mean, no. the em- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, some big rents walking, by the way, into the American place base by mistake, I guess. Anyway, that's a minor thing to, to say. Yeah, well, the Panther Battle Group in this situation, uh, with all those M8s going down to the Teller Mines, with the AT guns being decrewed by the advancing MP44s, when with no indication of any more armor out by the American player, I'm not sure, sure about take, uh, getting all the upgrades for a Panther Battle Group. Uh, as you said, some uh, P4 infantry support tank would have been much better, and even some armored cars. Yeah. MG. <laughs> yeah, MG by the airborne a supply drop. Run, 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 run. Enemy unit down. And that's bad. How many infantry squads are left in the P players uh, army now? Uh, two and a half. <laughs> uh, everybody is down to two men. That's a grim situation to be in. I kind of, uh, I kind of remember if you follow the uh, the tournaments and uh, of uh, game replays. Uh, Doctor Horse, I guess you know him. As, as was an expert. He's still an expert on game replays. When he played PE in a tournament, he always retreated his pigrens just before they were close to getting a loss on the on the squad and he did that and he did that consistently from the start of the game till the end even if that meant that he would be losing some uh, map control so i guess uh, he was prioritizing so much into not losing manpower and he in the end he won the game because he used that manpower to tech but we don't see that here do we <laughs> No, but in the American is pretty much anti-infantry from all units in the field. It's all bars, MGs, M8s and stuff. And the victory point situation probably means that uh, it's going to be a swift end to the P player's uh, life since the victory points stick down rather quickly. Uh, so that will give us the opportunity to talk a bit about what went wrong in the game, although I think we have covered most of it up to now. Nothing went wrong. Everybody, everything went according to plan. It's just a victory uh, that has not yet occurred. <laughs> Germany will not lose. Just these funny flag counters. I wouldn't bet on that, since the replay just finished. Yeah, but so it doesn't say hellos. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what would, would you have done differently had you played as the P player? Uh, I didn't, I hadn't built a um, Hotchkiss. Hotchkiss is <laughs> definitely, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I let me um, stick with my choice, it's, uh, well, with my opinion rather. It's a uh, pretty useless tank, you, you need uh, an expensive building with an expensive upgrade to get an expensive tank that does nothing. I don't really see why. So, I think you had, the people would have been better off with some other form of armor. How do you feel that he did not even get some uh, some armor cars? I mean, armor cars are kind of usual uh, for the people, but nothing here. Did you think? Do you think that the AT guns are that much of a deal against them? Or well, yeah, because they're of quite the effective, but the armor cars are uh, small enough to avoid so, some hits, like the Pumas, and they are fast enough to circle any AT guns. And since the Panther Jäger command was built, I expected to to get some vehicles at least, but all he got from this building was the NPs. No Marders, although he got the Marder upgrade, and no armored cars. So I guess uh, the overall conclusion is that the manpower was uh, so low at all times that he, uh, the P player had to uh, spend it all on reinforcing rather than uh, getting any vehicles, I guess. Plus there is this Panther battle group upgrade, which I don't really understand, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, you take, you te- you take uh, not, not right. 
the American player just chose the, ro the right units and then the PE tried um, tried a tactic that didn't uh, yeah work. Yeah, well, the American player kind of used a pretty standard thing with going for four rifle and fast a mate. So then he loses his first mate. He changes back to AT guns, which is kind of cool. Uh, he still has to face a lot of big guns, so he gets bars, he keeps them alive, they gain veterancy, he couples that with kind of a bit of flamer engineers in, in there, and some strafing runs to pin them when the things kind of turned against him. And no more uh, vehicles by the P player meant he really didn't have to uh, use any more AT guns, so he completely focused on infantry, had the whole map, and won the game. But, to be fair, Playing P in the retail is kind of a tough thing to pull off, don't you agree? Yeah, I, I like the better changes. The better, which most probably is going to be going to retail anytime now, but uh, I guess things will be changing uh, a lot in the once the better goes retail. Well, that is all. I guess for this cast, I'll have to thank General Mistake for taking part in this. <laughs> well, my uh, pleasure. Contributing as much as he could to this podcast being as great as it could. And uh, hope you enjoyed the cast. Any last uh, words for the audience, General Mistake? Uh, I guess I guess uh, Germany didn't die. We're just uh, waiting for the next round. Something. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. A battle was lost, but the war is still going on, right? Yeah. <laughs> the victory is on hold. Let's call this. Exactly. So, with that, we are going to be closing this cast. I'm Armand KG, and this was... General Mistake.